Hello everyone, welcome to Beginner's Guide. Today is a special day. In this special day, I'm going to teach you how to create this awesome website using HTML and CSS. By the way, this tutorial, I'm going to teach you every step that you need to know in order to create this beautiful design. So do not skip the video because if you skip the video, you might finding it difficult to understand some of the concept. So I recommend, I highly recommend you to watch this video till the end so that you will get everything that you need to know. And then if you have not subscribed the channel yet, please do subscribe. And if you like this video, do not forget to hit the like button. And if you think that this video is useful, share with your friends so that they can benefit from you as well. Now, without further ado, Let's get started. I'm going to open my folder here. Within this folder, I have three things. One, there is a folder name called image. When I open this folder, you will see the images that I'm going to use in this particular website. Then I have the HTML file as well as I have the CSS file. Let me open this folder with my text editor. By the way, you can use any text editor of your choice but I'm going to use VS Code as a text editor. So let me open this one with a VS Code text editor. Here we go. As I have showed you, there is an image folder. Inside there is a images and then HTML as well as the CSS file. If you have a look at the HTML, it just, uh, if you have a look at the HTML, it's simply a boilerplate. There is nothing inside. And then there is a CSS file. As you can see them there, there is nothing inside. Now let's get started. So let me just split the screen so that we can work both CSS and HTML side by side. Now let me create the structure. To create the structure, first I'm going to create a div with a class name called container. Within this div, I'm going to create another div with a class name called header. So inside this div class, I'm going to have the nav tag inside this nav bar because as you can see them there. So this one will comes under the nav bar. Here there is a logo and followed by I'm going to have the menu items. So for that, first I'm going to attach the logo. In order to attach the logo, I'm going to use the image tag with the source. So the source is that is coming from the images. So the name of the file is this. I'm going to use logo. So here I would go to images, uh, image, images, stroke, logo.png. I hope it's making sense. Right? Alternate, I would just say no. Now, after the logo, I need to have the menu items, isn't it? So for that, I will create an unordered list. Within the unordered list, I'm going to use the list. The first list is home. The menu item is home. So I'm just going to use the anchor tag. And then when I click on this one, it will be just found in the same link. I'm not going to take it anywhere. So now let me just duplicate this. Okay, now we have the menu items. I think we can just save and open with a browser to see how does this one would look like. As you can see them there. The logo is there as well as there is a horizontal line here. We will work on them. I think basically you can just see the logo there, right? So, okay. So let me just minimize this one for now. Let me work on the style sheet. I wanted to use some Google fonts. So for that, what I'm going to do, let me just copy and paste. I hope you know how to use the Google fonts. Just get the Google fonts, whatever the fonts that you want. Otherwise, it's not necessarily you need to use them. But here I'm trying to use the Poppins and Roboto Google fonts. So as you can see them there, the font family is Poppins and Sans Serif. So as you can see them here, I have used the global styling in the sense I have just removed the basic margin and padding. And then font family, I have set them to the Poppins. Again, I'm just going to set the box sizing to the border box. I think this has some basic styling. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get my container class. The one that I have created them here, I wanted to style that one now. So for this container class, basically I just wanted to set the width and height as well as the background color. 
so width and height would be 100 percent background color basically i wanted to set them to black so i'm just going to use the ascii values so that's it so when i save this one uh, you would just go and see the background color would be black and then the same logo there nothing special so what i'm going to do the next thing i'm just going to pick this class name called header so for this header class i'm just going to set the padding so the padding top and bottom would be 10 pixel and then left and right i wanted it to be let's say eight percent and then i'm just going to target the nav tag so i just wanted to use the display property as flex i hope you know when you use the display property as flex items will be arranged in a horizontal line so after that i just wanted to use the property as align item center and then justify content space between let's see how does this one would look like so that it will be easy for us to understand what we have done so far so let me refresh the page because of the logo size you can't see anything so let me just i'm sure that when you scroll down this side you would be able to see the menu items is been pushed to the towards the right side and then this menu items has a bullet points i'm sure that because of this logo again we are unable to see uh, anything so let us just style that logo a bit so that it will be easy for us to understand what is in there so let me just target the logo so for the logo what i can do let me create a class here and then class the name i would say logo so let me pick this logo class for this logo class i just wanted to set the width width i would say let's say 240 pixel let me save let me go there and see how does this one would look like I think now it looks better isn't it so so here is the logo unfortunately we are unable to see the menu items here but they are here because of the font colors when you change the font colors i'm sure that you can able to see the text in this particular design so for that what we can do now we need to change the color of those menu items so in order to change the color of those menu items i need to go to the nav tag then from there i'm going to the list from the before you go to the list you need to go to the unordered list then from there you can go to the list isn't it so so here i'm going to apply the styles let's say display property i wanted to say inline blocks and then list style i don't i wanted to remove those bullet points that are there so for that i'm going to say list style none then from there i wanted to set some margin property so margin top and bottom i want to set 10 pixel and then left and right let's say 20 pixel again i'm sure there's two you are unable to see the text because we haven't changed the color for the text so even when i refresh you will not see anything but when i highlight this one i'm sure that now you can see the item is been arranged horizontally before it was in a vertical order now it has been arranged in a horizontal order so now let's target on this particular menu item in order to target on those particular menu items so all you need to do is just copy this part and paste them down there now we need to target this anchor tag right this anchor tag is the one which has the home and other details so i'm going to say a let me just set the color first so that we will see the things clearly let me just set it to white let me save and show you i'm sure that now you can able to see unfortunately it's not coming so why is it not coming let me just check let me remove the text decoration to none and then let me just increase the font size 14 pixel and then let me set the font weight to bold so i would say 600 let me save let me go there and refresh unfortunately i'm unable to see the menu items where did i go wrong let me check the code maybe i made some mistakes in my html document let me check my html document yeah here is the mistake so this anchor tag i must have closed them here that's where the problem is let me save and refresh my browser here we go things are nicely arranged as expected so here is the logo here is my menu items so what is next when i hover on these menu items i need to have that underlying thing right because in my actual design if you go there 
Every time when I hover on these menu items, you see there is a nice border that is coming at the bottom of these menu items. So this is what we need to create them now. So for that, let me go to my style sheet. So I'm going to use the pseudo property as after. So I'm just going to copy this part and then I'm going to paste them here. I'm going to use the two full colon and after that is a pseudo class. I hope you know. Initially, I wanted to set the content to empty string width would be 100 percent and then I wanted to set the height. So let's say height is three pixel. And then I wanted to set the background. So background color, the one that you have seen them there is an orange. So let me just type orange. And then the position is going to be absolute. So when you say this one is an absolute, this is a parent class. So here I'm going to set the position as relative so that this absolute will work as expected. I hope you know that one. So from the left, I wanted to say it will be zero. And then from the bottom, I'm going to set negative six pixel. Let me save, go there and refresh. Now I'm sure that you can able to see the underlines underneath each of these menu items. But remember, in our actual design, initially those underlines, they were not there. Those underlines would come only when I hover on these menu items, as you can see them there, isn't it so? So to do this, all you need to do is just copy this part again and then paste them here. So that particular underline should come only when I hover on those menus, isn't it so? So before this after, put a colon, say hover, inside, initially the width has to be zero. In the sense, initially I don't want to see the underline, but when I hover on the menu item, that is when I wanted to see the underline, isn't it so? So initially it is going to be zero, but when I hover on the menu item, is going to be 100%. I hope it's making sense. So when I save this one, let's go there to check. Initially, it is not there. But when I hover on this one, you see the underlines are coming out. But the transition is not so smooth. So in order to make it smooth, let us add some transition. So here, down there, I'm going to add the property as transition. Let's say the transition will be is one second. Let me save. Let me go and refresh. When I go there, now there is a smooth transition. I hope it's making sense, right? Now we have done with this part. So what is remaining? We are remaining with this image and this background image as well as there is this text and this button. Now let us work on this part here. Finally, we will go and work on the image part, right? So now I'm going to my HTML part. So under this now on the div section, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create another div with a class name called, let's call this one as a content area. Since this is a place where we are going to have the contents, let me call this one as a content area. Then in our actual design, as you can see them there, I'm sure that this part is a H1 part, right? I'm sure that you can able to see this one must be a paragraph and there is a button kind of things. So let us create this one. So for that, I'm going to create a H1 tag. So within this H1 tag, I'm going to say, let's say I comma M. Let me just copy this. I'm Jacqueline. Then this other one has a different color, isn't it so? So just because this one has a different color, I'm going to separate that one with a different tag. So in that case, I'm going to use the span tag so that I can differentiate the color. Within that span tag, I'm going to use the text that I have them there. I hope it's making sense, right? So then from here, I'm going to have the P tag. Let me just copy and paste this part. So that will save some time. Let me paste them here. And then this P tag, this particular part here, starting from web development and UI design, has come to the next line. So for that, let me go there. 
this web development should come to the next line so before that i'm going to add the break so that this one would come in the next line i hope it's making sense isn't it so so the next one is i need to have that particular button a kind of button that you can see them here but when i hover on this button the background color has been changed and there is some nice transition i hope you have noticed so for this what i can do i'm going to create let's say we can create a button uh, there is no issue but let me just use the anchor tag just for the sake of uh, using different things but still you can use the button okay so i'm just going to use the anchor tag so within this anchor tag uh, what i can say here i will just put hash we are going nowhere so here i'm just going to say hire me let me say let's go and refresh our browser to see how does this one would look like now everything is here just because this one is an anchor tag the only text that we can able to see other things are there but unfortunately because of the font color we are unable to see even the font color and the background color they are black so we are unable to see now let us start styling this part so that it would look nice like the original design so now what i'm going to do i'm going to my style sheet let's pick this class name called content area so within this content area i wanted to set the margin left and top property because initially as you can see them there from the margin left there is some space here from the top there is some space here isn't it so let me set that one using these two properties name called margin left and top so margin left let me say eight percent again margin top would also be eight percent after that i'm just going to use the same class name now i'm going to target this h1 here so i'm going to say h1 now the first thing that i wanted to do here is to change the color of the text so i'm just going to use the color property i wanted to set them to white so that i would see what is in there actually then after setting the color let me just set the font size so font size let's say let's call this one as a 50 pixel save let's go there and refresh to see how does this one would look like i'm sure that is perfect right so from top 8% from left there is 8% now i have changed the color of the text now i need to do the same for the paragraph as well as for this anchor tag so let me do that uh, and then before i go to the other part there is a span tag here because i'm sure that you have seen this particular thing has got a different color so that is the reason why i have put that particular text in a span tag now let me just target the span tag just to change the color of that particular name in this case nancy so i'm just going to say color let me just use orange because the color is orange i hope it's clear so when i go there let me refresh as expected this one has a different color so now i need to work on the paragraph and the anchor tag so for that let me go to the paragraph so let me just copy this one so instead of h1 here i'm going to target the paragraph so i wanted to change the color for this paragraph again i want to see the font so i am just going to say white and then i just wanted to set the uh, i think just white is enough so let me save go and refresh yeah i think it's okay right so the next one is i just wanted to focus on this anchor tag so same again so instead of h1 i'm going to use the anchor tag so anchor tag this one is actually looking like a button isn't it so it's not like a normal anchor tag actually this one would look like a button so for us to do uh, like a button initially i wanted to set the background color so let's say background i'm just going to use some rgb color code basically this is a color that we are going to get actually it's going to be white because when you go there initially initially it was white right so but when i hover the color would change so the initial color is white that's the reason why i had to set this background color then from there i wanted to set some padding uh, top and bottom would be 10 pixel uh, left and right would be let's say 18 pixel and then i wanted to remove the text decoration because there is an underline because it's an anchor tag so i wanted to remove that underline for that text for that i'm going to use the property as text decoration it will be none so let me just increase the font weight I wanted to set them to let's say 600 and then i wanted to set the color of the text inside initially i've changed the background color to white so i have to change the text color to black so that i can able to see the text isn't it so 
Then I just wanted to set the display property as inline block. Then from there, I just wanted to set some margin property so that we we'll have some space. So margin, top and bottom, let's say it would be 30 pixel. And then left and right, let's say it would be zero. And then let's set some border radius. Uh, border radius, let's say six pixel. I think that's it. So let me save and run. I think it looks perfect. So the only thing that we are remaining with here is when I hover on this one, the background color should change, isn't it? So, so for that, what I'm going to do, when I hover on this button, the background color is going to change. So I need to target this one. How am I going to target? I hope you have already guessed. So I'm going to get this part, paste them there, colon. When I hover, what do you want to do? You want to change the background color, isn't it? So, so if you want to change the background color, simply you're going to say background color, uh, background. So it was actually an orange. So let me just use orange. Then when you, let me save, go there and refresh. When I hover, now it's in orange color. And then when I hover, the transition is not so smooth. So if you wanted to give a smooth transition, all you need to do is, here in the parent element, use the transition property. Let's say is one second. So when I save this one, go there and refresh. I'm sure that you will see the nice transition. I hope now you can able to see the nice transition, right? I'm sure that we have done this part. The next part that we need to do them is an animation because in our actual design, when I refresh the browser, the first heading is coming, paragraph followed by the button is coming, right? So in order to do this animation, what we can do, let's just create a class name here for this H1 paragraph and this anchor tag. So let me call this H1 maybe inside. Let me call the class. The class name can be anything, by the way. Let me call this one as a slider. I'm just going to copy and paste the same thing for all of these items, paragraph, as well as for this anchor tag. Because I'm going to apply this particular animation to all of these items, isn't it so? So that's the reason why I had put the slider class to all of those things there. So now I need to pick that class slider. And then I need to style it. I'm going to say dot slider. So within this slider, I need to introduce the CSS property name called animation. For this animation, I need to give the name. So the name can be anything. Let's call this as an animate. And then the animation would be one second linear forwards. So this is a effect that I'm going to apply. Now, since we have created the slider uh, with a name called animation, so I'm going to use the keyframes property. I hope you know keyframes property. So keyframes property will come with a animation name. In this case, the animation name I have said that animate. So I'm just going to say animate. So the animation would be at 0%. It would transform. And then I'm going to use the translate property towards the X axis. Let's say 100 pixel. And then the opacity will be 0. Just copy and paste. Change this one to 100%. So here now it will be a 0 pixel. Now the opacity will become 1. So this is how we apply animation. So when I save, let me go there and refresh. Yes, there is an animation, but the problem is everything is coming at the same time. But in our actual design, if you notice one thing, first I will see the heading, paragraph, then the button. This is how the animation should happen, right? So for that, I'm going to use the CSS property name called animation delay. So first, yes, I want the H1 to come as it is. But for the paragraph with the class name called slider, should come after the h1 so for that i'm going to use the animation property in this case animation delay property let's say the delay will be one second so after the paragraph i wanted to populate the anchor tag so the next one would be anchor tag a dot class name is slider so now the animation delay for this particular one would be two seconds because this one has to come after the paragraph let me save this one. Let me go there and refresh. First H1 is coming, paragraph, 
and then the anchor tag the problem here is the animation is yes it's happening but the rest of the contents are there in the page but i don't wanted to have them in the page i wanted to display them only when they slide in so for that what i'm going to do initially i'm going to set the opacity to zero for the paragraph because i don't want to see the paragraph at first i want to see the paragraph only after i seeing the h1 right same applies to the anchor tag even here i'm going to set the opacity to zero because initially i don't wanted to see the button and the paragraph i just wanted to see the h1 first followed by paragraph and then the button isn't it so so when i save this one now go there and refresh now the first h1 is coming followed by the paragraph and then the button is coming so when i hover on this one yes there is some nice transition and the background color is also been changed so what is remaining here is i need to include this image and then this particular image so when i hover on this image there is some nice animation so this is exactly what we are remaining with now let's work on that part so in my html let me create a class here i would call this one as a uh, images so within these images i need to bring those two images that were lady image as well as that a kind of shape that we need to bring in so for that i'm going to use the image tag so the source will be from images and then i wanted to bring that girl picture the alternate message would be no let me give the class name the class name let's call this one as a girl and then there is another image for the shape so down there so this one is what's the name i think shape so shape is the name and then the class name would say let's just call it as ship now when i save this one go there and refresh your website would look mess you see the images here the other things are working but the images are down there as well as this image is also down there let us work on the styling part for these two so that it would look nice so now i'm going to my css part let me target the container name called images so within this images i'm going to just set the position to absolute and then from the bottom i wanted to set them to zero uh from the right is going to be 80 pixel this is just for the container by the way then the width of the container would be let's say 45 percent and then the height would be let's say 80 percent so this is for the image container so within that image container we have two images so let me just pick this image container and then the class name got go so i'm going there to the images before i go to the specific class name called go and the shape let me go to the img so from the images i'm going to target this img so let's set some height and width so the height would be let's say 100 percent i wanted to set the position to absolute and then i wanted to set from the left let's say it would be 50 percent and then from the bottom let's say i don't want it to stick to the bottom like a bottom i just wanted to keep the image bit up so let's say two percent so when i say bottom is equal to zero it will be down there but when i say bottom is two percent it will be bit up it will not be completely found in the bottom of the page but it will be a bit upside then from there i just wanted to set the transform property so let's say transform it is going to translate towards the x-axis so let's say it would be negative 50 percent and then i'm just going to set the transition so transition i would say from the bottom uh, it will be one second and then from the left let's say is one second as well let me save and refresh so that you will see how does this one would look like i'm sure that now you can able to see everything else is coming this shape is there but the go the shape go is not there so don't worry let us work on that the go image because that one should come with an animation i'm sure that when i refresh this one i'm sure that you could able to see the x-axis and the y-axis here that is an overflow 
to hide that overflow you go to the container and then just say overflow hidden so that you will not see the overflow let me go there and refresh I'm sure that you are no longer seeing the that x-axis and y-axis scroll bar right now this particular part is here I need to bring that girl image so that we will have an animation so for that I'm just going to say you know what when I hover on the image container images container when I hover on that one especially on the shape this shape it is going to the bottom of 40 pixel when I hover on that uh, image the shape should go to the bottom of 40 pixel and then let me copy and paste and then the class girl should move from left to right so from left is going to move let's say 45 percent let me save and refresh my browser so that we will see unfortunately the girl image have gone down there so what is the problem let me check the code the girl image is there but it has gone down there i'm sure that you can able to see right so let me bring the shape up there so that the shape will be down and the girl image will be on top of it right let me save because here we were using i hope you understand why this issue is happening here we are saying images and image so from this images class it will come and look for the image initially it was the shape image uh, initially it was the girl image on top so the girl image will go down and the shape image will come up so i just wanted to change the order so that you will see the shape will be behind and the girl image will be on top of it so let me save and run this one to see i'm sure that now it's working perfect right so this animation is happening when i hover on this one yes there is a border bottom with nice transition effect so even here there is a nice transition the background color has been changed and then when i hover on this one the shape is moving up when i move this one i'm sure that you can able to see the changes right but the image is not moving why let me say hover there is no dot here no wonder there is no movements in the image let me save go there and refresh okay everything is working as expected yes now you see when i hover on the image it's moving towards the left side 45 45 percent so when i hover on this shape you see even both the shape and the image is moving uh this is about the tutorial guys i hope you liked this video don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with your friends subscribe the channel if you have not yet thank you so much see you in the next tutorial